Yes. Okay. Um, Pam, Brenda told me about this. So let's do this right now while we're waiting people to, for people to join. Um, Pam says she sent an email earlier and she was wondering about the Optivisor. Um, well, she doesn't know that it's called that, but now I'm telling you that's what it's called. Uh, the specialized glasses that you wear and if you're willing to share what kind they are and even better Pam they are on our website but Janet's gonna tell you about them you know Pam I've been using these for 25 years at least and it's the same thing you'll see sometimes a jeweler or a dentist or even doctors uh, wear I know my dermatologist I see him wear these a lot and they, you can have add-ons like a light or whatever. I've never found I needed the light. But um, what they are is just like the old-fashioned magnifier that you hold in your hand. And you get it at just the right distance and it pops up in large view, whatever it is you want to see. Well, the same thing happens with these. So you do have to be the appropriate distance away to get a nice, a clear uh, enlargement of what you're doing but it's great for threading the needle it's great for working on uh, black on black or when your thread particularly matches extremely well to the fabric it's they're just great it's called an optivisor and it comes with three different strengths of lenses so you can uh, pop them in and out and find out which one works best for you I will uh, warn you that uh, until I bought extras, mine kept disappearing because the kids would take it to get a sliver out. My husband it's would take it. It's stellar for a sliver. Yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, like when you're trying to see or you try to get like a magnifying glass. Yeah, you don't, you don't have three hands, so this uh, really helps. But anyway, just a word to the wise um, that it may uh, find its way into other rooms in the house. So... Um, but they're optimizers, they're on the website, and it's a great product, and they certainly um, last really well. They're very well oh, made. Oh, gosh, yes. Um, I put in the link in the comments, because we do sell them on our website, if you're looking for them. Um, another little uh, warning I would give about them is, if you're sewing and you're using them and you need to run out the door, just check your hair real quick. <laughs> Or your head, because yeah. they're pretty comfortable. Yeah, you and forget because they're you forget up. they're on there. And I've gone to the door, UPS guy at the door, and he's like, well, "What are you people doing Ooh, there?" Well, yeah, like it <laughs> gets you thinking, "What's happening in there?" So yeah, uh, but you certainly can't put them down and you're sewing, and then look up across the room because everything will be yeah. out of focus somewhat. You just pop them up out of the way when you don't need I them. I feel like they're but something that would end up on one of those lists, like the best thing you never knew you needed. Oh, yeah. Right? Like once you, you, you've you gone this whole time sewing without it, and then as soon as you start using it, you're like, I can't. I... Yeah. Where is it? I what, can't yeah. have that. Well, we have one in, in our bedroom because, you know, just for that slivers or – Small, tiny Donna's, screws. Yep, and Donna says perfect for ripping out stitches. Absolutely. Especially when you're, like, um, working with, like, a, a thicker, a polar sure. place or something, you know, and the stitches get buried in there. You're like, I'm going to rip the, the fabric if I don't can't see yeah, it. it. can get pretty frustrating. So, anyway, um, yes, if, if, you're, if you have any sight problems, you're starting to have more difficulty, especially with less light, um, these will really help as well. Um, but they just, you know, magnify, so they're... Uh... Yep. And Pam asked, which, you know, you showed, but they go right over your glasses. And um, uh, yeah. I have trifocals. You can use any type of glass over it. The thing is, is that you have to be at exactly the right distance, and then you'll be able to even see the twist in the thread. That's how great they are. Um, but I've had people try them on in class and go, oh, no, they're making me too dizzy. Well, they're trying to look all over the room oh gosh and, and yeah. you can't do that um well that's just like when you put on someone else's glass you can't wear someone else's glasses right. they're going to make you dizzy or give you a headache or whatever you can't just use them to look everywhere they're specific yeah but so. they're great they're on our website it put the link so hopefully that helps you out pam yeah. lots of comments of people who bought them and love them 
Oh, great. All right. We are going to, we have a couple. We still have the uh, uh, the Coca and the Aquino. What's left on the website, 35% off. Um, no code needed. It's just on sale. Uh, so you could check that out. Uh, Janet wants to let you know that Black Friday specials start Friday. So watch your um, inbox of your email on Friday morning. Uh, shortly after midnight, um, you'll get that email, and you'll see uh, you'll see what we're offering for yep. Black Friday. And it, it will run through Tuesday. My notes say is that that's correct. correct. Friday oh. through Tuesday mm -hmm. will be our Black Friday specials. Don't even have to leave the house. Yeah, we like that. Yes, and then I have so about the split yoke on the easy shirt. Is that yeah. before we get into what no, we're doing? No, it's right now. I meant to show it last week, and I forgot. Now, I need to get it up here so they can really see it. We and can't then... go to, I, it's, you put it back. It's easier for me to zoom in than oh, to okay. pull it up. All right, so on uh, the pattern, there is a split yoke back where you can shoot. You, the yoke is cut right straight down the center and chevron together so the seam is right here so you do it the same way i showed you to do uh match a center front so you want that seam allowance in the same place on the right as the left and then they'll match up like that and i like this look a lot better than just putting the bi uh the plaid on the bias it doesn't quite have the same zip so this was kind of fun and the directions are in the pattern guide for using that split back yoke. But when you do that, you don't do the split back yoke on the inside. On the inside, you keep just a, a full piece. I feel like there's somebody. somebody. What do you need, sir? <laughs> Can I help you? Um, okay, so you wanted to show that. Yep, yep. And, and this one's done. Don't tell Gavin or it won't be here long. I finally got the buttons and buttonholes on over the weekend so it's all ready to go so just never tell him or <laughs> don't tell him before the show's over anyway oh oh oh, oh. <laughs> okay um okay so last week what did we do on the shirt we did the sleeve plackets yes we did the sleeve placket and we put the sleeve in that's right and we used and top stitched the, yep the, the sleeve seam a needle width the way so now, um, one thing that I usually do right immediately after the placket, but we were kind of running short of time last week, is put the pleats or tucks in um, down at the bottom of the sleeve. Okay, so before we move on to that, Pam, Pam, not Pam, we answered Pam's question. Linda says she's stuck on her sleeve placket. Okay. So that's what we did last week. She says, I cut it on the bias. I've attached it twice, and both times it is terrible askew. Could it be because I cut it on the bias? Yes, that's exactly what's going wrong. And who is this? Linda, Linda Potsmully. Well, Linda, I know, I'm just going to give you a hard time for a minute because I love you, Linda. But I said several times I would not put the flannel on the bias. Hopefully you've interfaced it, but even interface with that lightweight um, knit interfacing and you wouldn't want anything heavier, it can still stretch. So my best advice to you is go and cut it on the straight. And um, you can see the one I did last week's cut on the straight and it looks really nice. So it doesn't need to be on the bias. Now when you're using a regular shirting, it's not a flannel, you won't have as much trouble, especially if you interface it. It just doesn't stretch as much as a brushed cotton. It's gonna stretch like a flannel. Um, and that reminds me of a, a couple of things. I've had a couple of people write and ask, and this happens quite regularly, so it's a common question. So I'm so sure- So we'll answer it here. Lots of people wanna know, what's the right side of the flannel or the brushed fabric? Is it the soft side? or the not soft side. And I, it, the brush side is the side that faces the public or the right side. So that's the, 
better feeling. It's a little softer. And I've had people say, but that's the side I want against my skin. That would just be so nice. Well, turn it around then. Nobody's going to yep. bust you If on you it. can't tell, <laughs> nobody else is going to be able to tell. But if you want to be technically correct, the brush side is the side that's the right side or faces the public. Sometimes you'll have fabrics brushed on both sides, double brushed. And then, again, it doesn't matter. But I always mark the wrong, what I decide is the wrong side with some tape. I know Brenda likes to use painter's tape. I like to use chalk. Some people use a safety pin. Whatever works for you, just mark whatever you've decided the wrong side so you don't get, uh, get it mixed up along the way. Yes. Yes. Agreed. Okay. I had to do that on the Halloween costume too. Oh, mark the wrong side. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I'll remember. It's the biggest lie I tell myself. Yeah. I remember. Um, okay. Uh, so we're ready to move on then. I do believe so. I do believe. Well, I had more than one person. I had two people ask the same question this week. A different same question. Yeah. And it surprised me. And it was. If there's two, there's more. They put the two fronts, the left and right front of this shirt, on top of each other, and noticed that the center fronts weren't weren't lining up. And they got very nervous mm -hmm. and wrote me and said, "That is there something wrong with the pattern?" Well, after I calmed down when somebody asked if there's something wrong with my pattern, it always gives me a little flutter. Um, then patterns I, go flying. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta look at this. Well, I double checked it just to be sure, but I'm thinking we made this pattern in 2009. Yeah. We made dozens of these. There's nothing wrong with it. But what I what is happening is no, those two piece pattern pieces are not symmetrical. Because the left side, if you remember from the construction, is got a wider placket that is double folded. And then a quarter inch seam is taken down of it. So now a tuck is taken out of it. All of this makes this side narrower, that left side, as it were, in the man's or right side as in the woman's. So all of that, once all of that is accomplished and you put those two fronts on top of each other, then they will be symmetrical. Neckline will be symmetrical from the shoulder to the edge of the neckline. That center front will be exactly as it's supposed to be. So when you look at that pattern, you're, it is going to confuse you because you didn't draft it. You don't aren't really thinking it through. But there's a lot of manipulation that happens to that left side that doesn't happen to the right side. But then they all pop together, and that's what's nice about having such a great pattern. Yes. And just to uh, play devil's advocate sure. for you. Because I know she, she said that she gets upset, not like <laughs> mad or anything. Like, oh, is there no, something my wrong with your feelings? Get her <laughs> right. Is there something wrong with your pattern? But you have to remember. And it's okay. I'm you okay. have to remember, and I know that you know this, and I fear to even bring it up that we will go on a tangent. But there are many pattern companies out there, including some big ones, that will know that there's an error in their pattern. And we'll wait, and then people will call and say, hey, is there up or right? And say, is there a problem with their pattern? Oh, yeah, we know. You just need to do this. They wait for you to call. They wait for you to ask. With us, know that we have found errors before, or maybe like a, um, a something missing or a little step A little missing. direction. We yeah, will yeah. fix it. Even if it's like putting a insert into the pattern guide or something like that. But don't ever feel afraid to ask. Right, um, right. But just know that we are not one of those pattern companies that finds an error and is like, well, we'll just wait for them to ask. They'll, right, or they'll right. figure it out. We will yeah. uh, make the adjustment in the pattern guide or on the pattern or whatever. Well, and the less expensive, or less expensive, less experienced would-be pattern makers would make the right and the left exactly the same because they wouldn't know the techniques that we know that come from the garment industry that make it such a fabulous shirt that it looks like it came out of fine ready to wear. Um, 
And that's the difference. And those down and dirty patterns, probably the right and the left are exactly the same, um, but they don't have the little extra pa panache. Yeah. I agree, Josie. It is wrong to wait for people to bring it up to you or to ask, um, but sometimes that's the world we live in. Well, yeah, and we're not here to judge other people's ethics in their pattern making. Um, you know, that's just the way it is. But I will tell you, and we've had people, I had somebody call not too long ago asking Brenda about a butterick pattern. And there was directions she didn't understand. And we said, well, why don't you call them? And she goes, you can do that? Most people don't know that. They do not publicize that. But when we used to take our shopping trips, our tours to New York, we toured both McCall's and Simplicity. They were separate companies now. They're all under one umbrella, but then they they were separate companies. Now they're all one. But anyway, and they had a desk with a person who that was her job. Answer the consumer's questions. And, and they had a list of patterns. I know Brenda called once on a little boy's pattern, and they knew about the problem. They knew, and they, they had the fix right there. But in their defense, when they make a mistake, unfortunately, Tens of thousands of those patterns are printed, and they have no idea who bought them. Yeah. So in how to contact the consumer, they so are they, left, yeah. you know, to not just to wait for them There's to call. There's just <laughs> a lot of different ways to do it, a lot of different ways that it's done, and um, big scales, little scales, like little companies, big companies, and it all needs to be done differently. Um, but know that if there's a, we know there's a mistake in ours, we will correct it. Um, and if you do find what you think might be a mistake, don't be afraid to contact us or any of the companies. Yeah, but we're, um, yeah, we're here for don't you. Don't struggle at home trying to figure it out. Or, yeah. you know, just give up because we're here to help you and whatever it takes will help you get through that. That's why we like that we have all these so longs now. Because a lot of our patterns now, um, I just went through at least seven of them. And I know there's a couple we don't have active kits for, but at least seven of them are videoed as well as our pattern guide. So you've got lots of options. Because some people learn better by reading. I had a woman a couple weeks ago and she said, I just want it written. I don't want to see it. And other people say, I, I, can't, I can't follow written directions. I have to see you do it. Mm -hmm. So we're excited we have both. So let's get going. Yes, let's. It's You know what? We're out of time. You guys will finish this shirt after. Thanksgiving. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, no. okay. All right. So, so we're going to get moving. What's the first? We're going to put the pleats and or what tucks in the bottom of the sleeve. So you're going to see the little tiny uh, short lines on the bottom of your pattern tissue. And they're right next to um, the sleeve placket. And so I've got them kind of marked here just, but I don't know if they'll be able to pick up on my markings. But I've also done the little slits. So I'm going to take the first set of slits and put them together. Then the second slit, two slits, and put them together just like that. And now inside the seam so allowance. So they're both going the same direction. They all, everything needs to go in the same direction. So everything goes toward the back of the sleeve. And this shortest portion here is always the back. So if you remember that, you'll get your sleeve placket going the right way and your notches going the right way. So at less than a quarter of an inch, you're going to just kind of machine base these down or stitch them down. And then what I like to do is come up above the seam allowance and baste them in again so that they just stay in place while I'm putting the cuffs on. So I'll just come up here and do this. So there's your pleats. There's our sleeve placket. And now we're going to uh, go ahead and do the side seams. And of course, you've already done your hem. We did that last week as well. So make sure you've got your hem in before you do this side seam. So I'm just going to match up the sleeve, the underarm seam of the sleeve matching my underarm seams 
Now this is a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Sometimes we've done narrower and we are going to trim this down to 3 8 but the reason that I've left a lot of the shirts with a 5 8 inch underarm side seam is because some people like to flat fell them or French seam them and you need 5 8 to do either one of those and all that does is it gives you a clean seam on the inside without any surging showing so for those who want that pristine look we've left that 5 8 but for me I'm just going to go ahead and stitch this up at 5 8 and then I'll trim it down at the serger and you could put this seam in on the serger but one of the things that bothers me about trying to do a 5 8 inch seam at the serger is that it's very difficult to be accurate and with the serger while it's the cutters over here and it's kind of cutting it off and I'm not exactly sure if I'm being as accurate as I want to be so for me I would prefer to stitch this up and then serge it off but if you've got a way of being very accurate while you're cutting that seam allowance off by all means just do it on a fourth thread on the serger now we're going to come down to the side seam get everything lined up and matching so remember we cut this out to match and especially while I'm demonstrating I'm hoping that I'm getting it right on but we're going to find out when we get done here if you want to take a pin or two and hold it in place still remember to always Thumb under, fingers on top. And make sure you hold it securely so it doesn't slip because you are trying to match this plaid. And we have one uh, person who bought the kit who's already finished hers and she matched her plaids beautifully. So go take a look in the community section on the website. Facebook page. I'm sorry, Facebook page. And, uh, but it, it came out really nice. Fits her great. All right, here's the, uh, look at there. Now the reason I can match these plaids is because I cut it right. And secondly, I held it right. It might make you a little nervous, like I said. And if you want to put two or three pins in just to make yourself more comfortable, go ahead. But otherwise, know that this can be done. And this should be your goal eventually is to be able to do just that and match your plaids. All right, I am going to go serge this seam down so that it is finished at a 3 8 doing this seam you don't want it any wider than 3 8 we don't want a seam that's flopping around we want one that's tamed and lays nice and flat now here we have a couple of choices you can leave a nice long tail and then take a darning needle or some other apparatus and thread this back up in there or you can take fray check and finish this off and trim this that's up to you both work you be the person to decide which one you like 
All right, you don't need to worry about it on the sleeve because that seam's going to be crossed with a cuff. Now we're going to top stitch this seam down. Now, I'm going to pretend, we're going to pretend that I went to the ironing board and I pressed that seam over. Now remember, I've told you a couple of times during, especially during this sew along, that in the garment factory, they don't press between steps. But they know how to make sure everything is laying the way it should when they go to stitch it down. And this is what I know, so I can kind of skip that step. I don't always, but because we, because we want to do this live and we want to get as much done as possible today, I don't want to take the time to press it. So I'm just going to make sure that it's laying over there nice and flat. And I'm going to stitch a needle width away. And I'm going to go all the way up the side seam and all the way down the underarm seam. Now this will work, again, depending on the type of fabric. If you had a high loft fabric, you probably want to press it because it won't stay flat as nice as um, just a basic shirting. All right, now we're going to go down the rabbit hole. So we're going to go down into the sleeve. So you can only go a little bit at a time. We'll go as far as we can, and then we readjust. Always stopping with the needle down. Don is asking to which side does the seam allowance go? Seam allowance always goes toward the back. So I'm just going to work my way down to the very end of this sleeve. And then again, I'm making sure this lays nice and flat. You've got more time, so just go over and press it. It'll stay right where you want it to be. And remember, a needle width away. Don't go too far away from that seam. So I'm coming all the way down. And now I just have to bring it back out of here. And there it is. And what's really beautiful is this is going to lay flat all the time. When you just sew a seam and let it go, it kind of rises back up. And it's a little less than neat and clean all the time. That's why men's shirts, everything is stitched down. It makes it so much easier to press or launder, or if you don't press like a lot of people anymore, well, at least it stays nice and flat and neat. Okay, so if there are any questions, I'll answer them. Otherwise, I'm going to go on to put a cuff on. Okay, all right, so we're going to put the cuff on, and we're going to start. Remember that... We have a cuff with a heavy interfacing, and then we've cut two with the heavy and two with the lightweight. The lightweight is the facing, so that's the one we're going to use first. And then the one with the heavy, I've cut on the bias, and that's going to be the actual cuff that faces the public. All right. So... Let's see. Is this the side I just did? No, this is the side I just did. All right, you want to turn your sleeve right side out so it's easier to sew in the round, but we're going to sew the cuff facing to the wrong side of the sleeve. That's why we need the sleeve right side out. Stay with me, it'll all make sense. So at the end of the cuff, we want we have a quarter inch seam allowance. So I wanna mark that. 
um, and I'll show you why. This is a re would be a ridiculous place to try and have a notch, and yet you, you need some kind of registration as to where to put this cup. So I just do it here at the table. So we're going to take the wrong side of the sleeve, the right side of the cuff facing, and that quarter of an inch that line is going to ma match right up with the edge of that sleeve placket. So we want that to stick out about a quarter of an inch there. And now we have a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And then at the other end, you're going to have the same thing. So if you're using minimal pins, put a pin in right here. And then just lay that right on top and let the sleeve feed in through the feed dog at a quarter inch seam allowance. This is the wrong sleeve. I'm sorry. Just go the other one. This one doesn't have the uh, the seam finished. Womp womp. Womp womp. So we'll do this one. <coughs> All right. While you're lining that up, uh, Sophie asks if you don't. This is about the side seam. Okay. If you don't serge the seam and you press the seam open, do you have to top stitch both sides of the seam to keep the both sides flat? Well, I would just never do that. I would not do that on a shirt. You might do that on a dress, but this is a shirt. And a shirt needs to have those uh, that tailored look. So if you don't want to um, use the serging, then use that 5 8 inch seam allowance and do a French seam. So a French seam is you sew the wrong sides together at a quarter of an inch, then you turn it right sides together and stitch it at 3 8 And then you'll have a nice seam and it'll be finished on the inside. But no, you would never do a shirt, and I invite you to look at any shirts in any department store from Walmart to Nordstrom's and you're not going to find uh, seams pressed open. Okay. All right, Molly, I would advise you to purchase both and then you know you'll be happy with whatever you get. What's that? <laughs> she says the purple passion or the wild blue yonder. She's having a hard time deciding. Oh, yeah. Well, they're both wonderful. I can't, I, I couldn't... I couldn't help you there. Okay, I'm just going to line this up like I did the other one, only a little better prepared this time. Okay, so again, I'm just going to match up my quarter of an inch on the other end. Okay, sorry, I'm a little heavy on that end. Okay, so now we have our cuff facing stitched to the bottom of our sleeve, and now we're going to sew our cuff to our cuff facing. Now, here's what's important. Right here, 
we want to be stitching right along the edge of that placket when we stitch these two together. So this is going to go right here. Now I can't see what I'm doing, but I can feel it. You could also chalk it. But what I'd like to do is stitch it and then double check it. And if it's, I'm not close enough, I can just go back. I don't have to rip any stitches. And I can just go back and get closer. So I, what I'm going to do here is, now that I've stitched that, instead of going around the corner, I'm going to come back and double check. Did I get close enough? I don't think so. I'd like to be just a little bit closer. So I'm going to come in a little bit closer. Being a little bit of a chicken there. There, now I'm spot on. Let me get in. If you can see that to pull it apart so you can see it a little bit better okay so now we can just go right around the corner and straight across at the quarter inch seam allowance remember I'm under fingers on top hold that in place so it doesn't ease the bottom to the top that's your goal on any seam Now, I will tell you that if you have cut yours on the bias, before you go to put it on, confirm with the pattern piece that it's still the right length because it can stretch quite a bit. That can happen with the sleeve placket if you cut it on the bias too. So before you go to sew it on, double check and make sure that it is... Um, indeed the right size pattern piece that it has stayed the same is that what you're yeah and if yeah. it hasn't you can trim it down usually because it shouldn't have stretched more than maybe a quarter of an inch at at the most so again here we are we want to be stitching right along the placket so i'm going to put that um cuff over the placket here and stitch down at a quarter of an inch, aiming right for that spot that I think is correct. And then I'm gonna double check it again. So let's double check. Yep, we're right next to it. I'm Hallelujah. All right, now we can go around the corner. So this is our burrito. And a lot of you have taken other classes where we've done the burrito. So all we want to do is get these, the <clears throat> cuff, two cuff pieces lined up with the sleeve seam sandwiched in between. Then turn it over where you can see the previous stitching. And then stitch just above that previous stitching so that you can't see that previous stitching on the right side of your shirt. We'll do the same thing over here. Alright. So again, here's our sleeve placket. We're going to kind of fold that up into the cuff so that it's out of the way. And then we're going to come and flip this over so we can see that previous stitching. Make sure everything stays nice and flat with the edges um, even or flush. Okay. So now we're going to trim these corners at about a 45 degree angle. And here's this one. Okay. 
Remember, when we stop, make sure you back up uh, three or four stitches here because when we go to turn this right side out, that is a stress point. So again, I'll just turn this off real quick. All right, so then we're going to turn this right side out. My little favorite uh, point turner. And again, when you're using a point turner, make sure you're not balling up the seam allowance. You want it to lay flat and nice, and you're not shoving this up into it rather you're massaging the fabric over the point turner so you get that nice look all right i'll get the other one and then our lovely assistant will press up that seam allowance because this is one i would not try to do without pressing and that is well i have but <laughs> and now she knows better I wouldn't recommend it. So I would highly uh, suggest that you press it. But what Brenda's going to do for us is she's going to turn the sleeve the other way around so that she can press this up in there. Okay? And then press the whole uh, cuff nice and flat so we can top stitch it. Because we're going to close it up and top stitch it all in one operation. So I'm going to turn this around so that it'll be easy to do it that way. Thanks, Bren. Mm -hmm. Anthony says, hi, Brenda. Hi. <laughs> Who is it? Anthony. Oh. Um, all right, so explain to Linda, if you can, since you don't have it in front of you, when you're doing that double check, Yes. What are you double checking for? I'm double checking to make sure that that seam that I'm stitching the cuff and the cuff facing together is right flush up against that sleeve placket. Right smack up against it. Otherwise, my cuff is going to be sticking out past the edge of the sleeve placket and we want it to be flush. So I will show you that in a sec. Um, it'll be obvious if you do it wrong when you turn it. And again, if you aren't close enough, you can go back and re-stitch it. And Linda, it's the same. Is this Linda Smalley? Mm -hmm. Linda, it's the same as the uh, everybody's. Yeah, it's the same as the everybody's. And I know you did two beautiful shirts. Uh, with that so um, it's the exact same concept and you would use the same concept if you had a folded cuff so this is a two-piece cuff but sometimes cuffs are just folded and so you would do everything the same except for you wouldn't have to sew them together but you'd have uh, the same orientation so, in other words, Linda, if we didn't get right smack up against this right here, our cuff would be sticking out over here. And we don't want that. We want it as flush as possible. We're not perfect, but we're pretty close. Get a few of these out of there. All right. So, here's where we um, left off. Let's see. I want to go this way. All right, so this is where we burrito. So this is all stitched down. So it's automatically turning under that quarter of an inch. So all we have to do is follow that lead, and it wants to do that. So the deal here is, is to turn it under a quarter of an inch and lay that folded edge on top of this previous stitching. See that previous stitching? The stitching that we stitched the previously. Yeah, the cuff facing to the sleeve. And yes, that was previously. All right, so we're going to lay that right down on, on top of that stitching line. Just get it started. And we'll turn under a quarter. Now remember that this seam has been stitched, so it could be pulled up slightly. So make sure that 
you don't let that ease. So you want to kind of do a nice firm uh, hold onto that bottom layer. Otherwise, if it eases, it's going to get a skew or cattywampus or whatever you want to call it. All right, we got that turned under pretty good. Yep. Now it's completely closed up. So now it's just a matter of going all the way around the cuff at that needle width away. And this is why you would have wanted to press it really well so that you don't have the wrong side showing, uh, you know, peeking over to the right. And this is another place where you have the opportunity, if you care to, double top stitch. So you could take your second uh, trip around this just like I did with the pocket and the shoulder seams. Or you can leave it at the single. Uh, oops. Uh, needle width away, single row stitching. And it's a completely up to the maker. And then you just want to go back to where you started, go over a couple stitches, make sure you back up one or two. And there we have, let me turn it right side out so we can get the full impact of how nice it's going to look. And there it is. And like I said, you could go ahead, if you're into the double top stitching, go ahead and you could go a second time around. Okay, so that is the construction of this shirt. And what's left to do is buttons and buttonholes. And I want you to take a look at your pattern guide because it couldn't, I couldn't explain it here any easier than it is in this book. And that is that we know where our center front is on our shirt. It, you, you may have chalked it or you may have used a certain portion of the shirt. Like in the red one, my center front was the division between these two checks. So I knew the whole time I didn't have to chalk it. That's where all my buttonholes are gonna go is on that line. And if you chalk that line nice and straight using a quilter's ruler or something, you won't have buttonholes getting out of alignment. One on, oh, a little bit this way and one a little bit that way. They'll all be right on that center front line. And ditto, with the um, with the buttons. So when I go to do the buttons, we'll go over here to the dress form. I use pins. <laughs> this is where I use pins and I use them for marking. So before the buttons are sewn on, I'm gonna line this up. Am I in a good position for you? I'm going to line up so I know that everything's right. And then I stick my button right through the center, or my button, my pin right through the center of the buttonhole and pin it to the other side of the shirt. And that's how I know where the next button goes. So I do that all the way down. Then I can set my button right on top of that pin. One more thing, stay right there. Sorry about that. And when I do that, after I've done that and I've got them all lined up, I use, this is my spacer. So not only is this a great point turner, but it's a spacer for buttons. So you set that right in there 
And now you can sew your button on, keeping the thread nice and tug, snug, and smooth. I don't know, words are failing me snug today. Snug or taut or yes. snug. But that's the that's the problem a lot of people have. They think you gotta sew the button on tight and you wanna keep the thread smooth, so they do it really tight, but then you can't button. Um, and when you have a loft as thick as flannel or wool or something, you've got to have some room behind that button where it moves around a little bit so that it sits up and it can be used. So this is a spacer. If you don't have this, put a couple of pins, uh, and I'm sure there will be other suggestions on here because I've heard lots of other ones, some way to use a spacer so that your button's sitting out here but you can still, as you're stitching it on, keep that thread nice and smooth and, and snug. But if you'll just use that, uh, that tip about drawing that line all the way down the center front and then putting your buttonholes on the distance apart that it says in the book on page 29. Okay, so... We're excited. We've got um, our... I'm going to Gina, I'm going to set this down so that I miss some comments. And okay. And make sure I didn't miss any questions. Sure, sure, sure. sure. And I don't want to accidentally click on something and lose you all. Okay. Okay. So, we're excited to see what you've made and <clears throat> quite a few of you have bought kits and we have more fabric coming in this week so check at the end of the week if you're looking for something different um more purple passion is coming in so whoever was trying to decide between purple passion and wild blue yonder uh you know that you can choose either one or both like jessica said and uh, be sure to check out the uh, Black Friday sale. That might help you make a decision as well. Hint, hint. Uh, Donna wants to know, do you re-space the buttonholes on a female shirt to make sure one isn't at the bust line? You want it at the bust line. You want one at the bust line. And if I'm making a blouse like the everybody's, absolutely, I want to make sure that there's a button somewhere in that region and then go in the opposite direction. If I'm making a over shirt, boxy shirt, like the uh, easy shirt, yeah, it's not that big of a deal because it's not fitting in the bust. There are no darts. It's not meant to be snug or well fitted in the bust line. So the reason that we always make sure there's a button right here is because if there isn't, you get this gap and your shirt constantly is gapping if you're moving around. Um, now, this particular shirt is not fitted, so you, should, you shouldn't have that problem either no. way. But when you're talking about, like, the everybody's shirt or a blouse or something. Yeah, something that's darted and meant to fit, um, definitely. So, um, there's no constant rule for everything. But in this case, I don't see it as an issue. The point turner. We don't sell the point turner. Do no, we? I, I wish we so. did because they stopped making this oh. one. Or at least they stopped selling it where I can get it because I was going to buy a bunch wholesale and have them available on the site because I love this so much. But um, it's got a wider button spacer here. So for a coat, the plastic is thicker here. So it'll give you even thicker because mm -hmm. the whole point of the uh, is to have what a mock shaft, if you will, by having that extra thread for it to float so that it can go through a thicker um, placket. Can you do the shirt in lightweight wool? Yes, absolutely. This is a shirt that can be done in just a basic cotton shirting. It's a beautiful, on the cover you're going to see a dress shirt. There's a dress shirt right here. So once you get this pattern uh, fitted on somebody and you they love it, you can go from a dress shirt to an uh, outerwear shirt really easily. Um, so there's no need to buy a separate pattern for a dress shirt or a sports shirt. They both work out. It just depends on the fabric you use, the 
and the treatment, the pockets, the trim, um, you know, will you zhuzh it up a little bit? Zhuzh. Uh, K, it is a point turner and a button gauge. That's what it says on it. So <laughs> it's a combo tool, a point turner, and then you have your two button gauges. I have my thing here, but a lot of you in your tools that came with your sewing machine have a button gauge. It's, it's an L shape. And it's thinner on one end. It's got the holes in it. It's in your drawer. You just like move it around when you're trying to get to other stuff. Yes. You don't know what it is. Yes, that's the one. Wait a minute. That's the I one. I have one in here. There's at least one person right now that's like, oh, yeah. Donna is telling me this is on Amazon. So if you're looking for one. Is what? On Amazon. Okay. There you go. So there you go. Thank you, Donna. Yes, there are a lot of uses for it. At this one in particular, you probably can't see. It has um, a ruler on it. It's just, I don't know if it'll focus well enough. Just, so you know, your little lines there for a ruler. Your point turner. Yeah, it, it's just a lovely little tool, and I have three or four of them, so that in case I've misplaced it, I always can find at least we one. We know at least where one is right now in yeah. my hand. And where two are. Um, so, oh, I want to talk about buttonholes a second. Do I have time? Do we have a choice? No. Okay. Okay, so there's lots of gadgets out there, uh, and we showed one at one time for opening up buttonholes. Well, just forget all those gadgets. If you've got a Zacto knife, now I have a little Zacto knife kit here, but you only need the basic Zacto knife. And again, that's easily accessible on Amazon. And it looks like this. And yeah, they oops, want, they'll want to see it. <laughs> I could see it. It's good. It's good. All right. And so now. If you could just point the camera. Sure. Now, I would put this at my cutting table, but because I waited till the last minute, and I don't want Jessica to yell at me. It's going to happen anyway. Before I cut my buttonhole open, I'm going to use fray check. And I'm going to do a line of fray check right down the center in here. So you want to have a nice, fine line of fray check. Once that's dry... You just take your Zacto knife and see how thin it is. You're not going to cut any of those stitches. And you can see what you're doing. And then you just run this down and open up your buttonhole with the Zacto knife. So you want to do that on a cutting a board. But there you go. And if this has been fray checked nicely, which this one wasn't, then you will have none of these threads or interfacing threads popping out. They'll all stay nice and tame. So Fray Check and Zacto Knife will help you with your buttonholes. All right. Oh, gosh. Okay, so to finish up. Yes. We have set a precedence. We have. We have. Of sharing your finished garment with us. So, if you are doing this so along, we insist on it. We insist. We will come to your house. <laughs> we shouldn't say that. People will just wait. They'll we have like, all their addresses. I won't put it in. Janet will come to my but house. I, 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 I'd love to go to Australia or New Zealand. but <laughs> Or Wisconsin. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, we want you to share your easy shirt. We're going to give you till January 10th, and we'll announce the winner on the 11th. So you want to put that on our Facebook page. You want to explain um, what the winner is? Is this the uh, snazziest shirt? The prettiest shirt? No, it is draw. Just anybody. So it's a random. That's what we usually do. Yeah. But yeah. You, I just wanted you to explain. Oh. Well, then I changed my mind. It's the snazziest. Okay. According my to... judgment. Uh oh No. <laughs> uh, anybody who makes one, it can be for you. It can be for a friend or relative. Um just make sure to get a good picture of it. Um, 
even if it's just on a dress form or a hanger we prefer to see it on the body but we know not everybody is comfortable with that um or you can cut your head off or whatever you want to do but we want to see it anyone who posts a finished one will um go in the drawing on january 11th so get it in by the 10th on our facebook page we would love that and remember this entire by the i think by the end of today this entire sew along will all be under the playlists on our youtube channel so go to youtube channel then click on playlist and it'll pop right up e the easy shirt mm -hmm. so long so all the episodes will be right in order for you and use those photos on our facebook page that other people post too for inspiration or to see you know oh, what how did theirs line up or did other people might, you know, play, Janet loves to play with the bias on certain things yeah. and stuff like that. And you can see what other people do. Or maybe you don't like that. And that's usually what Janet does. So you can see what somebody else did. Right. And I, I like to mix it up. You know, sometimes I, I put the cuff on the bias of this one, but not on that one. And, oh, wait a minute. Never mind. That one is on the bias. <laughs> but I do like to mix it up. So, um, and it depends on the person I'm making it for and the plaid I'm using. So, um, have fun. But send any questions that you might have to islandersewing at comcast.net. And you'll also find our email address and a link to our newsletter right here on the Facebook page as well. Yeah. So, if you're needing to get in touch with us, we've made sure all that information's up to date there. Yeah. Okay, Patricia, yes, 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 please, please, please. That's a great question. Um, can I post my bags that I made from my auction wins? Not for the contest, just want you to see them. Yes, anybody, if you're using our fabric or our patterns or our techniques, anything you got from us and you want to show off your um, creation or you just want us to see it, please post it on our Facebook page, share it. Um, yeah. so that we could see it other people can see it you can be an inspiration um, the contest is specifically this time for the easy shirt but that doesn't mean we don't want to see everything else I know um, we've had people share wedding dresses flower costumes, dresses costumes bags. yeah we please. love bags we all sew everyone who sews ventures into other areas of sewing it just because I happen to be a garment specialist hey I do bags I do um, costumes, I do pillows. I mean, I'm far uh, fresher and and more experienced at garments, but still, if it takes a fabric, a thread, and a needle, I might just try it. So, yeah, we love to see and be inspired by your bags. All right, so we hope you all have a wonderful Thanksgiving. We are thankful for you, and we will see you next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. I'm thankful for sewing myself, and I bet you all are too. Enjoy your family. All right, see you later. Happy Thanksgiving from Islander Sewing Systems. No pins, no basting. <laughs>